because these are something that you'll hear a lot in his beats. Here's how Apples was made. But there is one effect that's used in almost all of his beats, which this is super important to do. Alright, what's good, YouTube? So I just want to start this video by saying apologies for being gone for like an entire month. I just had to get some things sorted out, as well as the fact that I just need like a little bit of a break. But, you know, now I'm back and I'm ready to upload new content consistently, as well as just evolve this entire channel. So to start that, I'm going to be going over how to make beats for Drain Gang, and in other words, how to make beats for Blade or White Armor. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over their most used plugins, presets, and effects, how they make all their melodies, how to properly sound select, how White Armor makes his drum patterns, arrangement tips, as well as various tips and tricks along the way. Also, if you want any of the sounds or samples that I use in this tutorial, there's a link in the description where you can download them completely free. So the reason I've been stalling with this Blade and White Armor tutorial for so long is because it's such a hard thing to replicate with their music. Not only is there so much reverb and effects that you'll see that are going on, but it's also really out of my realms in terms of the stuff that I make, especially with the new type of stuff that you hear in like Blade's most recent albums or like White Armor's independent work. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be going over the more up-tempo trap related drum beats that they used to make a lot back when they were first starting. So as this being the most requested remake, here's how Apples was made. The first sound is a lead that comes from Electra X. The preset is called D March Volume 2 Aftermath and the ARP is called ARP Sega. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this is just a default preset in like one of the ARP banks. And yeah, this is what the melody looks like here. A lot of people think it's just like an ARP being held down like a single note ARP. But as you'll see, a lot of the ARPs that you hear in these melodies are also just being played out by hand instead of just being like automated through the plugins. So yeah, this is what this sounds like. The next is another sound as well. I'm pretty sure this is also a default preset in Electra X, and it's just a pluck bell sound that just plays over this ARP sound, and it sounds like this. And the next preset is this bell key sound that just plays over the beat. It sounds like this. And finally, this last preset, although it's not the exact one that's being played in the beat, it's just the closest thing I could find in Electra X, because I'm willing to bet the preset is somewhere in this VSD. I just personally couldn't find it. And it's just a little bell melody that just sits in the background, really gives the beat more character. It doesn't really stand out above everything else. And it sounds like this. And for the last sound, the beat, it's definitely not coming from a BSD. It's really just a guitar being played. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure White Armor can play guitar, or at least one of the producers in Drain Gang can play guitar, because you'll hear a lot of like real guitar sounds in these beats. So there is a guitar that's playing some sort of chord progression on top of it, but like it's practically impossible to replicate an actual guitar in a BST. So the closest thing I could get to it was this. So then the next sound is this basic 808 that just plays throughout the beat. That sounds like this. And then as for the drums, I kind of just got lazy because there's nothing really like crazy to talk about with these drums. I just laid down the basic repetitive parts and I ignored all the little like perks and sounds that are playing in the background. So that sounds like this. The only two things I want you to take away from this is one, how there's like spacings in between all the hi-hats, and two, how the kick pattern is really like unorthodox and doesn't follow along with the 808. It's really just playing its own pattern, it doesn't really follow any rules, and you're gonna see that that's like a common thing with these beats. Yeah, so now everything together sounds like this. things I want to conclude, not necessarily just from this remake, but as well as just by like listening to a lot of their beats, is that practically everything is coming from either Nexus 2 or Electra X. Mainly Electra X though, I've heard some people say Serum and I'm not too familiar with that plugin to tell you whether it is or not, but I couldn't find anything in the default libraries. The reason Nexus 2 and Electra X work so well for these types of beats is because they contain a lot of layered sounds with ambience, reverb, and delays in them. But as for the two of them, Nexus 2 is mainly used for bells, pads, keys, brass sounds, and bass sounds. 
sounds, and Electra X is mainly used for bells, arps, leads, and keys. You can alternatively substitute CRM for practically all of these sounds except for like bass and arp presets. And if you don't have either of these VSTs, other VSTs that I find work really well are Omnisphere for bass and ambient pad sounds, and Dune 3 for arps and bells. That being said, when making your melodies, you want to start with a simple bell or brass lead. When you start your beats, understand that you're setting the foundation and vibe from the start that every sound you select and every pattern you layer will be based on. So for Drain Gang, I'd say there's a balance of like uplifting and anthemic sides to their music. Generally, that means avoid using like one note gaps. Instead, go for note gaps of like more than two. Two note gaps are usually used for like sad vibes. So if you want to go down more that sad route, feel free to do that. Personally, my favorite types of songs that they make are the more up-tempo and anthemic ones. So that's what I'm going for for this beat. So that's what I did in the preset called SY Digitalism from Nexus 2. And it sounds like this. Then I layered that on top of this brass sound from Omnisphere called Strings Hollywood, and another pad sound called Pad Midnight Trains. The melody looks like this, and it sounds like this. And this is where I slightly messed up with this beat, because instead of laying down like an ARP lead like the one you saw in the Apples beat, I laid down a chord progression, and personally I wouldn't recommend doing this. Only because if you want to make like a unique ARP lead in the beat, having preset chords and notes laid out doesn't give you a lot of space to be creative, but you know it's not the end of the world if you do. But anyway, I took this dreamy guitar preset called Katano ARP from the Dune 2 sound bank, and I just turned off the ARP itself so it just plays individual notes. And then I layered it on top of this preset called Glorious Steel, which is just another Another guitar sound coming out of Omnisphere, and that sounds like this. And after that, I add this art preset, which once again, what I was just talking about because I didn't have a lot of space, I just had to copy and paste the exact same chord progression and put it over it. But yeah, I took this art preset called Arp Lax from this halfway bank and I layered it on top of another Arp sound that's called Arp Chip. They both kind of have like that retro vibe and they sound like this. Then I just went back and I add this little like FX that's in my drum kit and it's called FX Deep C and it just kind of like ha adds to the vibe of the beat and it's really just layered over the main melody that plays throughout and it sounds like this. And as you can hear, it doesn't sound like it's playing over exactly all the notes, specifically this one right here, and that's because I put a gross beat on it, similar with the original chord progression of the guitars. I just add gross beat, you know, because it slows everything down, just adds to the vibe of the beats. So then I just add this very basic rhythmic arc that just comes in and out throughout the beat. So for this sound, it doesn't have any rhythm to it whatsoever, it's super repetitive, and it doesn't use too many notes, which as I've talked about in tutorials like the Metro and Nick Mara one, works perfectly for these types of beats, because when you bring it in and out, it's not going to throw any anyone off when you do. So the pattern looks like this. At the end of the day, again, because I laid down these chords, I didn't give myself a lot of space to be creative with it, so it's just super basic like this. The two presets I use is this art preset called Four Dance Table BT. It's one of the default banks, and then I add this synth bell sound called Keisha Truck, and it sounds like this. And then finally, only after all of that, I add this bass sound that just plays throughout the beat. The pattern looks like this, and the preset is called Indigo Huge Ballad Rones. I'm not, I know I'm saying that wrong. Then it's layered on top of this brass sound called BR Hollywood Brass, which is a preset that he uses a lot in his old school beats, and that sounds like this. So now everything in the beat together, specifically at the end of the beat, sounds like this. And 
as for effects, it's all really about the reverb plugins like the Valhalla ones and the Echo Boys to even like the fruity reverbs and like delays. But there is one effect that's used in almost all of his beats and that's some sort of rhythmic volume gate because there's so much going on in these beats. You might miss that there's a lot of bounce to these melodies and that's what's so important when using a lot of reverb sounds. So what White Armor does is he just uses the gated presets and gross beat and before adding any sort of reverb what you want to do is just automate at the bottom so it's barely playing on the sound and it rather just makes it so it sits in the background without the listener noticing it too much but yeah apart from that and really like tight eq sounds there really isn't any like real secret effect plugins or anything like that that if you've made beats before you don't really know about it's really just eqs reverbs and delays and like automations like this one so as for the drums i see a lot of people overthinking this part because the melodies are so complex and unique that people think that this also applies to the drums but i went through practically all of the drain gang to rip squad drum kits and i found all these generic trap sounds and nothing really unique to it but the one thing they did all have in common is that the sounds were all really well eq'd which this is super important to do because as i've said many times on this channel before when you're using like a lot of reverb and just like sounds in general you know you don't have a lot of space to just not have your sounds eq'd so you want to be efficient and just take the time to eq each individual sound to remove those like little unwanted frequencies and all your presets you know all those things start to add up and it really will make a difference so if you don't know what i'm talking about i'd strongly recommend watching the mixing tutorial i find that the best drum kits for these types of beats are especially for the 808s like the nick mara drum kits especially because they have a lot of like stretched out heavy 808s which are like a trademark for these types of beats so as for this beat the first thing i did was just that i add this 808 pattern that just follows the root note so specifically you want to come over to instrument properties here and you just want to replicate this and what this will do is just make it so when you let go of the actual note the 808 won't like drag on it'll just cut off all together and also as you may notice for this pattern this isn't just for the 808s in particular but for all these drum patterns you'll see that they're not too repetitive so don't be making like simple two or four bar loops but yeah anyway this is what the 808 sounds like so then i add the simple hi-hat pattern that sounds like this Then I add this simple snare pattern that sounds like this. And then I add these open hats because these are something I hear a lot in his beats. So yeah, they sound like this. Then I just started adding a bunch of perk and layered snare sounds just to add to the rhythm. They sound like this. Finally, I add this kick pattern. Do note that once again, most of the times the kick pattern doesn't play along with the 808 pattern. You know, that's what I did, and it sounds like this. So now with all the drum sounds, everything together sounds like this. Finally, as you may have noticed, there's one last thing I want to note for arrangement. This is a trademark with all of his beats. What he'll do is he'll have these two bar gaps, usually with the 808s, hi-hats, open hats, and kicks pausing for as a transition. And I'll have different versions of this, meaning like have different things cut out at certain points of the beat. So that's something I definitely recommend doing. But yeah, apart from that, there's nothing else too crazy going on. I mean, I have these basic automations during these transition effects, just to further signal to the artist that a transition is happening, along with these like basic reverse and regular crash sounds that play throughout the beat and you'll hear this a lot in white armored beats as well but yeah that's basically it for this beat as well as this tutorial i'll play the entire thing at the very end make sure to follow my instagram and twitter at fin of the god and also go cop my personal drum kit most on volume one with the store link in the description and yeah make sure to like subscribe and peace
peep the overlay. Oh, fancy. Oh, look at the, got the, got the neon lights. Instantly, my beats are better. Oh, got these foam things. Peep the F. Took me like a week to make. I already know.